Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> Nigel here from Nigel's Modeling Bench. And I think this is going to be the penultimate part of this build. Um, this is part 12. I think the most we're going to get to is part 14. I'm going to try and get this finished in this and one more part. So there's going to be quite a few little video segments. So there'll be quite a little breaks. And I really want to get this one done and um, actually add a model to the finished list. Put out some dust there. So where have we got to? Basically, this is where we are. If you remember, I filled in the holes in the front fenders. Um, and basically, we've done a lot of work with filling and scribing and this, that and the other. So uh, this is where we are. Um, I remember I said I was going to show you how I did these stars. And I thought I had done. But um, basically, all I've done, you can see these, these boards are mounted on a piece of blue tack which is stuck to a block of wood, which is I use, I use all the time for holding my model parts for spraying them and stuff. So what I've done is I've stuck them onto there. I then painted them red. I'm sure I showed you that uh, and then lacquered them with a clear lacquer. I've then gone on with some silver paint, some enamel, and I let that dry for about a week. So it's absolutely solid. And the plan was to go in with some enamel thinners and just remove the excess silver paint. It was just it was just a drop on each star. Um, but the trouble was you could take the enamel thinners off, or the uh, paint off, but not neatly enough because the moulding's quite soft. So then I thought, how else am I going to do this? So I put some more silver paint on there. And then I've gone around with a very, very watered down mix of um, Vallejo Red, which brushes beautifully. And I've just basically brushed around the stars. So you can see there, they're, they're not perfect. But when you actually look at them on the model, you know, sort of from, 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 from six inches away, they look absolutely fine. In fact, they look quite impressive for such an old kit. So that's how I did them. And then they'll have to have another coat of lacquer just to seal them in. Um, or varnish, should I say. If you remember last time, we painted the, the inside of the headlights um, silver. And now what I've done, I've taken the clear parts off the sprue and cleaned them up and fitted them into the uh, into the headlights there. I haven't glued them yet. Um, we're going to do this together. Now, I've had a few goes with this, this um, Revell contactor clear and not been that over the moon with it. But I'm just wondering, maybe I need to shake it a bit more or something. I don't know. So we're just going to give this a go. And what I'm going to do is rather than use the brush that's in here, because the brush is about a scale 27 foot wide, I'm going to get a cocktail stick. And yep, add and camera, the cocktail sticks won't come out, even though there's a hole there for them to come out of, because we're on camera. So I'm just going to dip the cocktail stick in the glue and get a drop of it on the end and see what happens if I can make this capillary around the um, around the lens. Now the beauty of this glue is, I mean its downfall is that it's so thick, but the beauty of it is it does dry absolutely clear. So I'm not going to actually worry, fuss too much about doing this too neatly because it might even improve the finish because being an old Airfix kit, the clear parts are not the best. So what I'm doing now, I've, I've changed my mind already, what I'm doing is actually going right over the clear part with this glue and making sure the glue goes down into the seams around the edge. Now, as I say, I've never tried this, but the experiments I've done with this glue, I found it to be not particularly very good as a glue, but it does dry very clear. I actually want to get myself some um, crystal clear from uh, Microscale. I need to put some more on there because it's not leveling out. There we go. There we go, that's kind of leveled out. And then I'll do the same on this one. I'm just making sure it goes down in. And the outside edges of these headlights need cleaning up anyway because there's a mould seam around them. So I'm not really too worried about getting it all over the outside edges. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that comes out. So we'll let that go off. 
Right, if you remember, I filled in these two holes in the front fenders, front wings, um, because the actual, here's the, the lights here, the actual pin on those lights is much smaller than the holes that were there. So um, I've actually, what I've done, I've filled these up with a bit of plastic rod, which is quite simple. And now what I'm going to do is just roughly mark the middle of those plastic rods there like that and then I'm going to drill with a 0.65 drill just make an indentation like that in fact I think I'll use a smaller drill and then open it up afterwards because these holes need to be angled so if I get like um, a 0.5 drill And just drill into there into the what I'm doing is just first of all making a mark in it like so there you go and then what I'm going to do is come vertical so that I know that I'm actually vertical so that the lights sit vertically rather than having them angled down so I'll make sure I'm vertical in both planes I'm just going to draw through I think this draws a bit blunt actually yeah I think this draws very blunt actually <laughs> there we go we're through and I'll do the same here if you notice I made the mark first with it on the angle like that and then what I'm doing is coming up and I've got the mark there for the drill to sit in if you try and drill it like that straight away you're likely to just slip off and scratch your model so um, and that was the reason also for putting the indentation in there we should go through any minute now there we go So that's the 0.5 drill gone through. Put that one back. And then we'll get the 0.65 drill. And again, making sure we stay on the angle vertically, we go through like that. Just a quick rub over and are fine and now those lights will fit in there beautifully as I say that was a 0.65 drill so we can put that away then we can take these lights and just pop that in there and that will just sit there now nice and square and then a tiny drop of Tamiya Extra Thin. What I'm going to do is put my finger on the light and then go in from behind with the glue. And then the same on this side. like so just push that down in and there we go that's them in make sure they're facing forward And make sure they're vertical not looking down or up and that's thimming 
and I'm just going to give them a little tweak. No, they're fine. That's okay. And if you notice, they don't come with clear lenses. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll just paint them silver after after the model is uh, complete. If there's, they may be, um, they may even not supposed to be silver. Maybe they're like blackout lights. So that's that little bit done. So let's start looking at the handles now. Right, so I've got three of the handles off now. They're here. Um, and I've done a bit of sprue trickery. If you want to see about getting these handles off and cleaning them up, then look back a couple of parts. You'll see how I did the internal ones. They're basically the same. Um, and if also you remember when I put these internal handles in, I was very concerned about the holes on the outside because they actually use the same, it's a through hole and the handle goes in on the inside and it uses the same hole on the outside. So what I wanted to do was make sure that I've got something for these to go into. So what I've done, I've got a 0.85 drill and I've got it just sticking out of the chuck just by about a millimetre as you can see there. And then what I'll do is go into that hole and just drill it and that's it. Now if I don't do that, I run the risk of just going straight through and drilling that other side out. And we can see that one there looks like it's absolutely fine anyway. So that's okay. That one there needs opening up a bit. There we go. So now what we've got the we've got the holes in there now that I know are deep enough for the handle to, to fit into. And then of course we've got these ones down at the front where the, the bonnet is or the hood, depending where around the world. Um, then we know that um we know they're okay because they're not blocked up. Now this one on the front goes this way around, so it's pointing backwards. So I'm just going to put that like that. And the reason I'm doing these now is because they're painted green. So we may as well do it all together. And I'm just going to put a spot of glue on there like that. And that will be in place. And that one will stay there. And I'm going to add a little bit of interest by not having it absolutely dead vertical. I'm just going to have it sticking up a touch. Okay, so that one's in place there. Now I'm going to pick up handle for the rear and just put a spot of glue on it like that and then manoeuvre that one into position. Now these would have been actually probably horizontal so I need to get that one right like that. And I'm going to put another spot of glue on there just to make sure that's solid. Sometimes with these glues, especially if you're using the quick setting extra thin, whoops, if you move the part after you've um, if you move the part after you've glued it down, then it's always best to just put a dab of glue on afterwards just to make sure because sometimes what happens is the glue starts to work and it kind of I think you know what I mean when I say it's strings and then when you move it you break that string. And there's that one in. Just get that one horizontal. And just pull them away like so. And there we go. I've noticed there's a little bit of flash on the inside of that handle which I'll have to take care of because that'll bug me. And there we are. And we'll leave those to go off. I'll get the other three off, cleaned up and get them glued on and then I'll be back. Okay, so all those handles are on now and all level and everything. I've just been playing with that rear piece there. Um, <clears throat> the lights that you saw, I put the contact, this uh, contact to clear on. Um, one light, it looks great. It looks quite good. Uh, so I've left that one alone. These two headlights looked awful. Um, so I've taken them off the sprue, stuck them in a bit of blue tack and then basically polished them. Um, and I'll show you what I've done. I, I started off um, by just getting a knife and peeling off the contact. It's, it's kind of almost like a PVA glue, although it's, it kind of dries a bit harder, I think. So all I'm going to do is just go over here with a black pen and just cover this whole thing so that I can see when I've sanded 
the lens and the outside edge of the um, headlight together so they're actually flush so I'm using this is a green Flory Sandis so he calls this fine and one side is finer than the other so I'm using the the finer of the two sides if you like and um, this sends a little bit more worn so I'll use that one and then I'm just going to very gently sand over this and keep slightly tipping until I remove all the black pen and then once I remove all the black pen then I know that I've actually got the the, the glass part the clear part flush with the rim of the headlight and it obviously if it's all one-sided don't go trying to put a big angle on it just gently sand away until you get it all nice and level and flush and it should have a sort of slight bowl to it um, then with this um, soft sanding sponge I'm just going to go over this go over it and do the same again and that will bring out the worst of the scratches I'm going around in all the different angles to make sure I don't leave scratches in any one particular way just blow the dust off of that now I'm going to squeeze the blue tack to raise the headlight a bit there now this is a Flory polishing stick it's blue on one side this is where you get them from florymodels.co.uk uh, it's blue on one side white on the other and these if you look uh, online you'll see how-to videos on how to polish canopies and remove seam lines from canopies so what I'm going to do is just make this a little bit damp little tiny spit on my finger and then with the blue side just rub away until you think you've got all the scratches gone and you get this sort of kind of reflective but sort of slightly dull look to it and then you do the same on the other side with the white and if you listen what happens when I start squealing then I know it's done and you'll be quite amazed at what it does let me hear it starts squeaking there we go and generally when it starts squeaking that's when you know you're you're pretty much there and there you go if we look at that in the light you can see that it's um it's pretty shiny what airfix have done they've molded that little lump in the back so it kind of gives the impression of a bulb in there but there we go they're nice and flush now and they're um they're ready for paint i'll uh i'll use a bit of masking fluid on them i think and then um or maybe make a mask i'll show you how i do that um, I've also got all the other parts here, the steering wheel, the side steps and the bumpers here. I've add, added that name plate or is it a number plate to the um, to the front bumper rather than try and hold it and glue it on after. So I'll get all these painted now and then um, and then we'll get them glued on the body and I'll also show you about how I'm going to mask off the interior as well. I don't want to do anything until those handles are dry and we also need to um, moving on we need to get this windscreen polished because you can see that's a bit of a mess it's got all sorts of marks in it where the but you know it's only to be expected the mold tool for this kit is um is very old and um when the mold would have been made for the clear parts so technology wouldn't have been anything like it is today with all the different plastics and stuff that are available now so you know it's only to be expected but you can you can polish clear parts every, all day long so um i'll get this painted and then i'll be back Right, so I'm going to make some masks for these headlights. I've measured them; they're about five and a half millimeters in diameter. So um, I've got my scribing template here. I've got a piece of 10 mil masking tape, and what I'm going to do is just put this here. I've got the five and a half mil circle there in front of me, and all I can do is with the sharp blade, the sharp point of a knife, just go in, and with plenty of pressure downwards and a bit of pressure outwards I'm just cutting around and making sure I don't go inboard what's the main thing if I slip off the side of the scriber that's fine I'm not applying enough pressure to cut my finger but um, what I do want to do is make sure that I don't go inboard and end up cutting into the mask 
And there we go. And just to check they're okay, if I grab the corner of the tape and peel it up, I should end up with those two like that. And these little bits of tape, always stick them back down your bench because you can always use them again if you're tight like me. Um, and then I'm going to pick this up with the corner of the blade, like so. And I can get my light. Hold that pretty much over where I need to be. And there it is. Done. And that is actually too big. So I'm going to have to go to the next size down. Which is five millimetres. Maybe I was using the wrong hole. So I'll go to this one here, which is five millimetres. And then once again, doing the same thing. Go around with the knife. And we'll just peel up the corner of the tape. That's more like it. And there we go. Simple as that. Okay. Right. Now I've cleaned up that lens. I ended up cutting the um, contact to clear off the same as I did with the headlights because it sort of stayed tacky. Um, I've, I've used it a few times now. I'm not going to recommend it to anyone. It's... Um, I don't think it's any good at all really. Um, so basically I've taken it off of there, sanded that, that, that sand, well not sanded it but just scraped it because there's actually a vertical um, grill on that uh, on that light. Um, as I said mentioned earlier I've put this, this uh, badge plate on here so the front bumper is just sat on a toothpick ready to paint and I'm only really going to concentrate on painting the inside and the underneath um, and then the same on the rear bumper, concentrate on painting the inside and the underneath of that. I've got the headlights on, you can see I've got them upside down because I want to concentrate on getting the paint underneath them. And I'm going to paint these and um, concentrate on getting the paint in around the, the inside areas on them. Um, what I'll do on the body is go around and just paint around the areas where there's going to be uh, stuff like the headlights. Um, and in behind the bumper areas here that will be difficult to get to once everything's on. Uh, this is like the grill here, so I'm going to have to mask off that front um, number plate. The steering wheel, I it says to paint the centre 11 and the outside black. Um, I'm going to go with a black rim, a green centre, and then I might put some silver on the spokes just to add some effect. I've got a feeling it may be like the old Morris Thousands. Maybe, maybe this would have had chrome wire spokes on the wheel. And I think the hub centre would have been the same colour as the rest of the interior of the car, which is going to be the, the basic green. Um, other than that, the whole centre would have been green. Maybe, maybe the whole steering wheel would have been green because they used to mould them in like a, I don't know, a, a shellac material. Um, so basically, yeah, and this is the box that goes on the back here. So I'm just going to make sure I paint that, paint the inside of that green. So when I put that on and then once all of this is painted and on, we'll completely finish it. We'll put the mirrors on and everything and then we'll paint the whole model. Um, and then it'll just be a case of going around and giving it a wash and touching in the, uh, the mirrors and stuff with some bright silver paint. So um, I'll get this painted now and I'll be back. Okay, so that's uh, that bit of painting's done. So I've done the grill basically, gone round where it's going to be difficult to get in behind the lights. Um, I've cleaned up now where all the glue joints were. I've also painted these little mud guard things um, underneath as well. So um, yeah, so all sort of coming together. I've painted these bits. I've painted the bottoms of the lights, the back of the rear bumper, painted pretty much the complete front bumper. Um, that's just sitting on there and then I've done the the uh, kickboards the rear piece and the steering wheel the outside of the steering wheel is black and the center of the steering wheel is green as you can see there so I need to leave that to dry now and the next thing we're going to look at is this windscreen now I'm going to try and get this in the camera so you can see it 
If you look on the right hand side there you can see there's all sorts of um, horrible sort of there. There's like a semicircular great scratch in the tool. Luckily that's proud so that can be sanded out and it's also got various scratches all over it where the mould tool has been polished and dented and polished again and dented and stuff. That line there I think is a is a fault the same as here you've got these lines running through the clear parts it's a pretty common air fix trait unfortunately um, with these lines running through the clear parts um, it's an issue I wish they would do something about because I think pretty much every air fix kit I own has got it so uh, it's something they need to look at but um, I don't think that's going to polish out but we'll see what happens um, I'm going to be using this part here, the folded up rear glass, because I'm going to have this one with the roof up. I think it looks so much nicer with the roof up than down. So I'm going to um, going to be doing that. So uh, let me get on with the, get, let me get this off the sprue, and then we'll look at starting to get this polished up. I just want to talk for a minute about taking clear parts off the sprue. Um, I've mentioned this before in my build along video on the Junkers 88. If you haven't seen that, and you're a beginner. That might be interesting for you, a build along where I build, sort of do an hour's work and then I put it on film and then you can follow along. Um, it's not a group build, it's not like this, it's sort of, I do a bit, tell you what I'm doing, show you what I'm doing, every single piece of what I'm doing is on film. And then you can basically follow along and do exactly the same. So if you're a total beginner, you should end up with a model exactly the same as mine. Now I'm, I'm not an expert, um, but... You know, I've, I've been doing this many, many years and I think I produce a, a half decent result anyway. So, um, just make sure those handles, I think I've touched one of those handles and bent it down. In fact, I think I've touched both of this side. There we go, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, if you just go in with your snips and start cutting clear parts off, um, you run the risk of shattering. Um, I'll try and show, I know I'm not going to be using this piece, so I'll try and show you here. This is a cheap pair of side cutters. If I just come in and go like this, you see, and it's not going to do it because, because it's a piece I don't care about. But you run the risk of, when you do this, and you cut really close to the part, you run the risk of it, because it's hard plastic, you run the risk of it kind of breaking and it'll craze through into the part. And then when you clean it up with your sanding stick, you won't be able to remove it. It stays there in, in the plastic. And there's this sort of white line you can see. So what you need is a, is a really good pair of side cutters. Um, or if you haven't got them, what you can do is come along like this and cut the sprue further away. Okay. So you cut the sprue further away like that. And now you've got that bit left on there. And then you could basically work away at that and sort of cut away, you know, cut away a bit like this and then cut away a bit like that and just keep doing it. And you can almost hear when I'm doing it, it kind of crumbles rather than cuts. The other way you can do it, um, like with these two nibs we've got on here on the top, is get yourself one of these saws. This is a JLC saw. It's not the same company that does all your... Um, you know, the, the new way to peel a potato or a corn orange or something. Um, this is the, or corn apple, should I say. This is actually, a, um, I think they're a Czech company. They make these saw with the saw with the handle. You can see Libor, Libor Copper Czech, I guess that's how you say it. And um, basically what you do with this saw, you come along and you just gently saw through with no pressure at all. You just let the saw do all the work. And you basically remove remove the sprue from the part with your saw like that okay and then you're left with a minimum then just to sand off um, and it re removes any risk of anything going particularly um, I mean Airfix clear plastic is comparatively soft compared to a lot of manufacturers now I can't remember but I think Hasegawa clear plastic is extremely brittle so you need to be really careful with that, especially on stuff like your um, your big clear canopies. Um, like, well, they'll have a piece of sprue on the end, you just cut it, and it'll just scrape, craze straight through your uh, straight through your canopy, and ruin it. No matter what you do, you can't hide it. You can't get rid of it. There's there's no way. So what I'm doing here is just cutting the sprue off. It's very thick, very thick indeed here. So I'm just cutting through the sprue 
there we go that's gone so I can do the same on this side that one's gone as well and now I know that I'm okay just to sand or I could come in with an extremely good pair of cutters and just cut it off like so without it crazing all right so there's a little um little tip for you for the newer guys if you've got a cheaper pair of snips like these don't try and cut the clear parts off the sprue you'll, you'll ruin them all right right I've brought in a little closer here um, and I've also just done a bit of filming without the camera switched on which is my latest favorite trick um, what I'm going to do here now is try and polish these marks out and what I've started and this is really a little bit too coarse you don't want to be um, using that on this part because you you don't want to be putting any scratches in it so what I've got here is one of these um, these are these cheap supermarket sanding sticks I keep talking about they're like they made like a thin plywood material I think and you can cut them to all sorts of shapes and you can just cut like the, like I've done with this one to get into corners and just gently sand away to get rid of the marks that are in there and you can see that just by going over it like that you can get rid of those those marks that semicircular ring of marks that was down that side if the camera will pick up on that um, so yeah there's there's that bit gone and what I'm doing is just wetting the stick and I'm just gonna go over the whole the whole piece of clear because if you remember there was a the whole thing was covered in scratch marks and spots and dimples and God knows what and um, at the end of the day if this if we really can't get this back then we could dip it or we could cut the clear out and put a piece of acetate on there to uh, replicate the windscreen um, but I'd rather try and get this sorted because making a well, you'd probably have to make another frame actually because you'd, you'd never cut the, the clear out of this and keep the frame um, it's just too the plastics too brittle so um, just going to keep rubbing away here being careful we've got wiper blade detail on the front here and we don't want to be sanding that away because when we do a bit of dry brushing that will pick up on the detail so I'm just damping the end of the stick I, do, I should be using a bowl of water or something I know it's disgusting I'm just dabbing it on the tongue and there we go so that's that side done. I'm, I'm going to do one side at a time, I think, although I've already, I've already started on that side, so too late for that. Um, so let's get the other side done as well. It wouldn't be a bad idea to stick this down to something, especially when you've uh, polished one side. There we go. I think I've got all those marks out now. So now I'm going to come in with this um, fairly worn soft sponge and just go over it again. You can see we've got a mark in it there still. That's gone. Yeah, the marks are um, very shallow there's hardly anything to them but they are there so and of course if you've got some you could use um, you could finish this off with Tamiya polishing compound or ordinary toothpaste if you've got the, the blue gel stuff and all these modern fancy stuff and they're good but the old-fashioned white toothpaste is uh, makes a very good polishing compound has a certain amount of abrasion in it so I'm just going to cut the end off of this to get me a, a new end if you like you can see now the whole thing's looking quite dull and we can see that line is still there so that's part of the injection molding process it's not going to be polished out 
So if you really are after perfection, it might be better to um, to actually replace this with a piece of acetate. Here you can see where those marks were. It's uh, it's going to take a bit more work to sand out. Then of course the other thing you can do at the end of the day if you really are not getting any, anywhere with this is cover it in dust. Um, you could make up some semicircular masks like where the wipers have been and then cover the rest of it in dust. Which would look quite effective if done properly but then you'd have to make the whole model a bit dusty. It's no good just having a, a dusty windscreen. There we go. So let's uh, see how we get on with polishing this now. So again, I'm using this floory polishing stick, same as did on the headlights. Again, it's going to stay looking dull. You also need to be very careful not to break it because. The pressure of sanding will just it'll just crack and it'll be, it'll be gone. If you're doing this on a canopy, um, fill the canopy up with uh, some, some um, plasticine or something. You, blue tack can be a bit too soft and allow it to distort and, and then gone. So a bit of um, a bit of hard polished. Um, <coughs> what's it called? Um, I just said it. Jesus, getting old. Please have it with your brain. Um, I can't think what it's called now at all. I just said it. There we go. So you can see that it's starting to come back, it's starting to get some luster back. And it's looking a lot better than it did. And the problem is because I've done both sides, I should have done one side at a time. I don't know which side is still foggy. If I look at it in the light I should be able to see but um, I'll just keep going like this for now. As you can see, it's starting to uh, starting to get there. So now we'll have a go with the polishing side and see how that gets. See where that gets us. As you can see there, it's starting to uh, starting to get there. So I'll just keep on polishing like this, and then I'll come back when it's done. Right, I've been on this now for probably 20 minutes, and it seems whatever I do, I can't get rid of these scratches. And I'm beginning to wonder if the scratches are in the plastic. I, I'm not sure, but whatever I do, and even when I do get it perfectly clear, it, it's got so much distortion in it. It's um. It's untrue for a flat piece of plastic, but like I say, it's a very old kit, so we have to be a bit forgiving. So I've now got three options. I can either have it dusty and, you know, mask up where the um, wipers go. But whatever I try, that can be my last resort. I could cut the clear out and put a piece of acetate in there. Um, that would be quite difficult to do. I'd probably end up having to keep this bottom part of the frame and then scratch build the sides onto a piece of acetate that would look really good um, if I could pull it off um, it's not easy uh, acetate doesn't work with this um, extra thin so I'd have to use super glue or something it would be quite difficult to do 
um, I could use acrylic glues or whatever but um, this is a beginner's video so what I want to do is show you something now people have heard of future clear whatever um, this bottle here is very old uh, this bottles probably which says they're 1997 I'm, I'm guessing this bottle is probably 10 years old um, maybe you know different you look at them you can see how much it's faded I keep it in the dark because otherwise it goes yellow you can see it's already started to turn yellow but for the amount you use it doesn't really matter um, and rather than keep decanting it and put it back in I always try and use the bottle to save the risk of you know introducing dust or debris so all I'm going to do I need to get a piece of kitchen towel make sure models out of the way what I'm going to do is dip the part into the future like so make sure it's completely covered and then let it drip off like that and then what I'm going to do is just dab it onto the kitchen towel paper on the corner and that will you can see how it builds up and we can see there's some bits of dust on it which is a shame probably means I'll have to do it again Yeah, that dust is on this side. Okay, so I'll dip it again and hopefully that dust will be gone. And yes, it is by the look of things. So I just dab it on the kitchen towel because what you don't want is to let it build up in any corners it'll look awful when it sets and you can see by looking at that straight away it's a lot more clear um, and as it dries it does pull down uh, this works if you've got a very old kit like this um, with a you know a, ca a canopy that's all milky or dis distorted or scratched or whatever this actually um, works a treat uh, some people totally agree with disagree with the whole process of it. Um, I always try and avoid it if I'm honest. But I'm going to leave that there like that for a second. And I'm going to put something over it. I need something that's dust free to put over it and I don't think I have anything to hand. So, I know. I'll put the box over it. And that's just to stop any dust lying on it and making it um you know falling on it and sticking to it so we'll see how that looks when it dries and what i'm going to do is call that a day for this video um like i say it'll be another two parts i think so what we'll do is let this paint all dry and everything and then the next video we'll get all the uh, body and everything built up and um and then we can get it all painted we get the lights on and everything and then we can get it all painted green um, I'm gonna have to mask and paint around this um, around this windscreen frame I'm gonna have to paint the inside of here um, or paint the whole thing actually and then um, glue it on with a bit of white glue or something um, and that is basically that all we've got left in the box now are the clear parts as you can see here I've got the mirrors on there and the handle for the boot or the trunk and then we've got these two frames which are for the internal glazing uh, for the back seat and I'm going to be using this one which is the folded up one so um and this is the folded down roof and this is the erected roof and we've got our wheels and tires there all ready to go on once it's painted so um yeah we're practically there and as far as the instructions go I mean I've skipped ahead looking at the windscreen but we're going to be putting the bumper on and then fitting these little pieces in afterwards um, you know with the uh, lights on the uh, stars on uh, we'll, we'll fit them in afterwards we'll paint the silver on the mirrors and those uh, spotlights on the front and that is that so come back for part 13 which will be building it up and painting it and then part 14 will be putting the decals on and given it a weather and the final reveal and everything so um 
thanks for watching uh keep watching it won't be long and this will be finished i actually want to get one of my projects out of the way because i've got about 437 on the go so um i look forward to seeing you then bye for now